I'll talk to you guys about Gecko. So Gecko, as you can see from the website here, <clears throat> is based on the character Gordon Gecko from the movie Wall Street. The point of Gecko, the bot is actually is is actually a trading bot. So what it is is you can use it to trade for you without you having to sit by your desk all the time. And what it is is actually it does these small trades. So it goes in and out any cryptocurrency that you choose within over 20 plus exchanges that it supports. And what it does is it'll buy and sell in um, not high frequency trading level, but more like maybe 10 times a day, 15 times a day, 20 times a day. You really set it to operate very often. High frequency trading is probably like thousands of times a day. So this is more just like automated trading where it just trades for you and makes small profits along the way. As you can see from today's chart here, you can see that there's these downs and ups, downs and ups. So the idea of using a trading bot is to avoid it to buy on the low, sell on the high, so on and so forth. It wouldn't do it every single time it moves. It depends on how much it moves. Like over here, it probably does not moving enough for it to actually react depending on how sensitive, I guess, you said your strategy to be. Anyway, so I looked online. I was researching on Gecko to see if there's any installation videos like to teach you how to actually install it. And surprisingly, there really isn't one. So there is one created by the guy that actually created the app. He didn't really go into step by step either because he expects you to know a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna go through like a step by step of me actually. Well, I took screenshots of every single step that I I, I made. So hopefully make it easier for you guys to understand. So first thing I did was actually I just went to the installation port of, of Gecko. Basically, Gecko is supported on every single platform: Windows, Mac, Linux even the Raspberry Pi, which ultimately I will probably be putting Gecko on that instead. Then that way I'll be able to let it run 24 seven. And that's the idea. Right now I have it currently installed on my uh, Windows laptop and that's where the step-by-step -step will be uh, show on. So let's get started on that. <laughs> well, first thing I did following the instructions is to install Node.js actually. So I went to the website. So just download, and uh, they recommended down downloading the LTS version recommended for most users. So that's what I did, downloaded that. And after I downloaded it, I installed it. So I downloaded it here, then I went and installed it. Just went going through the steps of installing. It's very straightforward. There's nothing you have to do out of, out of the ordinary. Just install it as they say you're supposed to. I didn't do any changes, just follow the standard setup. So installed it. Once it finished, then I went to GitHub, which is where Gecko resides. So GitHub stores all these open source code. So Gecko is an open source software. That's one thing that you can trust more, because at least you know that the code is publicly vetted by everyone else, you know, in the open community, so that you know that they're not the code is not there to steal your exchange API key. So anyway, <clears throat> so I went in here. I just click download zip, and then all you have to do is unzip it. So I, I placed it in my D driver window. So. If you guys are not familiar, maybe I'll consider doing one for Mac as well. Ultimately, I might have a couple of videos covering Gecko just because it's a more involved topic. I mean, all you have to do is unzip the file, so you extract all, unzip it. So after you unzip it, press the Windows button and type in Node, and then depending on what version of Windows you have, I'm assuming Windows 10, it'll bring up Node.js command prompt. So this is the command prompt that you want to use to run Node.js, which is what you just installed previously. Once you're in the Node.js command prompt, you want to navigate back into the location where you download it and unzip your Gecko bot. Well, I downloaded it in D drive, unzipped it in D drive, Gecko dash to develop, and then uh, Windows and zip stuff that puts it back into its own Gecko develop. For me, I had to go into CD, which is change directory, Gecko dash develop, slash Gecko dash develop again. So that's when I got, I got into the directory. Once I did that, then I can install the additional Gecko dependencies. These are the dependencies that Gecko needs in order to run properly. So all you have to do is follow the command line, npm install dash dash only equal production. So, I, so basically just copy and paste it in here and then press enter and then it starts extracting it. So this will only work if you are in the correct directory. If you don't know how to navigate to the correct directory, that would be a problem for you and uh, hopefully you can find some information online on how to um, navigate around command prompt. So it'll finish and it'll tell me that it finished installing all the dependencies needed by Gecko. So I didn't see any error messages in here. So that means I'm good to go. So the next step is starting Gecko. All you do again is the like same thing as the last step, just copy and paste this, node space Gecko space dash dash UI. Copy this and paste that in here and press enter and it'll run. And now the Gecko UI server is running. So at this point, all you have to do is copy the HTTP uh, link, and then you open a new tab in uh, Chrome or whatever browser you're using, and then you paste that in there in the address bar and press enter. And then um, there you go. So 
get Go is up and running. It's just that simple. I mean, I, I was surprised how easy it was actually to set up. Now you want to do is add your API key, your private exchange API key that you don't want to share with anybody. Right now you go to config tab and get Go, and you can just click on add an API key. And in here, you can choose the different exchanges that you have that you want to use Gecko with. So I choose GDAX. And then in here, they ask you the key, secret, and passphrase. And all these three will be provided by GDAX. Actually, the passphrase you can make up yourself. So this is GDAX. So in here, you can see that once you go into the API view, you can create an API key here. The permissions you're supposed to set only give it view and trade so that the bot can only build your account and trade your account for you. They ca cannot withdraw money. That's the most important thing. No transfer, no manage. So make sure you don't leave that out. The passphrase, again, you can make it yourself. I think GDAX gives you one by default, but you can change it to your own passphrase for more security. And then IP whitelist option, if you want to restrict it to your own IP address. Once you have those things filled in, you can click on create API key, and then you send copy and paste all that into Gecko. Once you have the API key added into Gecko, it'll show you that you have your GDAX API key or whatever exchange you're using, and now you're good to go. Now you're able to set up Gecko for trading. So you go back to the Live Geckos tab, and then you click on Start a New Live Gecko. And then from here, you get different options. You can do Paper Trader, which is just paper trading, won't lose you any money. Market Watcher, which is just building up a chart of the market for you. Uh, or TradeBot, which is why I selected. And again, the exchange, the currency, the trade pair. And then your strategy, I'm, I'm following RSI again. And then you can, you can always make a whole bunch of different adjustments. I haven't even gotten into really playing with the different parameters inside and making a custom strategy yet. I'm, there's so much to it. But anyway, at this point, all you have to do is click start. And that's when my thing didn't work. I was like, what the heck's going on? It didn't, it didn't work. I got this error that says, and if you go back to the um, command prompt, it'll tell you request timestamp expired. So what it was is, then I always, you know, as I do with every single error message I get from anything, I just Googled it. And then on Google, I was able to bring up um, this GitHub closed issue. And basically, what they told me was that my clock on my laptop was wrong. So all I had to do was just update that, have that uh, synced up to whatever servers that uh, Microsoft have uh, available for syncing time. And then I was able to get it to work. So again, it's like it even tells you again, like that this is the second error message that I got that really helped clarify the issue. Failed to take in time. So you I knew something was related to time, so confirm it was the case. So then I was able to run it. So I basically fixed the time and then um re uh, restarted my gecko. So all you have to do to restart your gecko too is uh actually let me go back a few screenshots. So from here, all you have to do is press control C for Windows and it should exit out of the server mode. And then you have to just press the up arrow to bring back the command, uh, that command line again, press enter to restart it. Make sure you only do this after you fix the timer or whatever issue you are already, what you are experiencing. So once you do that, then Gecko starts running and you're good to go. And that's pretty much it. It's like so far, I hasn't really done any trades for me because RSI is really a conservative indicator. It hasn't found a point of RSI that's actually to its liking. This is a trading view of RSI with the one hour candle matching what I had like, uh, on my Gecko bot. But there was only one time when Bitcoin was oversold. And it was around 1400 UTC. So I, I probably missed that when I was setting up the Gecko bot. Depending on which strategy you use, RSI for me, I personally don't think it won't, won't trade more than like once or twice per week even. Maybe maybe five, I, I would say up to five times for a week around there, depending on how volatile Bitcoin can become. But the idea is to just make tiny trades to make some profit off of um, off of Bitcoin while it's trading sideways. So that's the idea of, of the trading bot. Anyway guys, so this is my video for today. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for post notifications. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining. It isn't worth speculating. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.